Auckland, a vibrant, diverse city. Home to 1.4 million people, it is New Zealand's largest urban metropolis and the heart of New Zealand's business and commerce. But despite being a city of tourism, competing at a global scale, Auckland is also a city that has a thriving cultural heart. Art galleries and festivals are common attractions to the city's residents. But perhaps more significant to Auckland's cultural identity is its performing arts. I've only been in Auckland for 10 years and when I f from when I first came here to now it has changed dramatically. Auckland has got a lot bigger and it, Auckland is also getting even more and more diverse in terms of its culture and lifestyle. So there are a whole lot of elements bubbling away um, that all have their own form of cultural expression. So I think the Auckland performing arts scape um, is just starting to tap into some of that diversity. It's becoming the, uh, the cultural or the performing arts uh, capital of the country really. I mean you could argue that Wellington is there. I disagree. I think Auckland is where it's at for performing arts. In Wellington the geography down there really helps um, organisations and practitioners to work together in a sense of community because all the theatres are in with walking distance. Auckland is different, it's much more spread out, but in saying that it has its own energy which comes from, it's the hub of business, it's the hub of commerce, it's an international port, a big city. So it attracts a lovely entrepreneurial energy. We are producing so many tremendous great artists who have energy and um, drive to, put, to make their own work. They're not sitting around waiting for the phone to ring anymore. They're actively going out there and producing their own work. In the uh, early 90s, there were a number of theatre companies that uh, disbanded for whatever reason, and the Watershed Theatre was one of those. And there used to be the most amazing work down there. Theatre at large used to do huge scale productions. Michael Hurst would do a Hamlet there. It was a place where there was a lot of energy from artists and practitioners, directors, designers, um, who all um, made work at the watershed. It was always slightly edgy, slightly risky. Different companies would come and go. There was a bar out the front. You would go there and meet people. You would go there and be part of the community. Uh, and that bar out the front was such a memorable place. And once that closed, it left a real gap um, in the marketplace for those artists to work in. We knew as a city that we were missing a theatre, we were missing a hub, we were missing a community. The theatres that we have just don't have the same vibe. The closure of the watershed spurred on dozens of calls for Auckland to have a contemporary, revitalised venue which represented the spirit of the Auckland community. You can't have a healthy arts environment without a healthy arts community. The Q Theatre, for example, didn't begin as a, a building plan, it began as a group of people. The Q process was a good or oh, 20 year process, so it's taken a lot of people a long time lobbying government, lobbying for funding, raising money, fundraising, getting donors, getting building consents, that whole thing's taken a good 20 years to get to. So when the Q Theatre started to develop, one of the major things I know that they wanted to have was a bar or a cafe out the front that people just wanted to go and hang out in. So by having a really awesome bar and restaurant right on the street front, it attracts people just in its own self to come and have a good drink and have a good time. And I think that's really important because um, theatre and arts have always been a place for people to meet. In terms of a venue, it's an amazing place because every theatre space, so Rangatira and Loft, are designed to be fully flexible. So that means you can put the theatre into any configuration you like. The spirit and the values that Q are built on are quite incredible. And those values are around flexibility, agility, entrepreneurialism and celebrating the extraordinary. And every time I go to the Q Theatre I see someone that I haven't seen for a while or I see another theatre practitioner or somebody that I kind of go, hey, we should get together to talk about that thing that we always wanted to do. And that is how our community builds and that is how performing arts continue to grow. Oh, look at that, Jack. Mexican sun, it's coming up. Burn, burn, burn. Tapac is another performing arts venue located in the Auckland suburbs. It is similar to Q in its versatility, but unique in that it aims to cater to performers of all ages in order to create strong arts communities. So the goal for Tapac is to provide 
a thriving performing arts space for Auckland community, but in particular for the emerging artist. An artist that's still to make a name for themselves. We want this to be their home. That's its primary focus. Its secondary focus is to provide a safe and an encouraging environment for the youth of the performing arts sector. And its third uh, role, I guess, is to serve the needs of the drama and dance department at Western Springs College. It's a space owned by everybody, you know, the buck doesn't stop with any one person or one organisation. It's everybody's space and it's quite infectious, the energy that's here. I certainly like it. I think a performing arts scene measures the pulse of society as a whole. So if our society is unhappy and in conflict, and there's a lot of inequality. I think that performing arts and arts in general have a role to play to connect that inequality. Personally, the reason I'm in the arts and the reason I'm in education and the arts and performing arts is that I absolutely believe that the unexamined life is not worth living and that if you don't understand humanity and you don't see how other people have approached humanity and used language to explore the very thing that we're living through, then you're kind of missing out on something and um, the value of performing arts for allowing us to to see this life that we're living is just huge to me. I don't think there's anything bigger. The Auckland performing arts scene has changed substantially in the last 20 years. The opening of the Q Theatre is the first step in what is considered to be a cultural renaissance for the city. And as Auckland grows, its arts culture will continue to grow with it. <laughs>